Anyone that knows me knows I'm a positive person, so I don't like making videos like this. But we can't hide from the truth. No one likes to be in a legal dispute. No one likes going to court. Being in a legal dispute is not a pleasant experience, and going to court, certainly for most, is not a pleasant experience. And in this video I'm going to talk about why the ugly truths of the justice system. Every day of our lives we're expected to comply with the law, and to do that you're expected to know what the law is, because ignorance of the law is no defence. So if you don't know what the law is, and you break the law, then you're accused of breaking the law, and you might find yourself in court. Or even if you're in a contractual relationship with somebody, and you don't quite know how to formulate that contract, or whether or not something you are doing is wrong, or if you are doing something which is normal to you and you've always done it, but somehow someone gets hurt and then you're accused of being negligent, and then you learn of this thing called a duty of care and the breach of that duty of care and that causes someone else loss and damage, injuries, and then suddenly you're negligent and you never thought of yourself as negligent. Just today I've had a friend mention that someone was in a martial arts class. Now that's something close to my heart. I've been teaching martial arts for many years. But they paired this person off with somebody 50 kilograms heavier than him. And unsurprisingly he got hurt. Now for me as a martial arts instructor, there's a clear argument that the instructor there was negligent. But maybe the instructor doesn't know that yet. And maybe it's going to come as a surprise. But all of these things might pop up at a moment's notice when you least expect it. And then suddenly you're in the justice system. And by which I mean the civil justice system or the criminal justice system. And either way, you're going to need legal advice. Now, legal advice is not cheap. Even if you go with someone very junior or even just newly qualified, it's still going to be hundreds, if not thousands of pounds before you get a definitive answer to your legal position and what you should do next. What happens if you rely on that advice and let's say you're in a police interview and you're advised to remain silent and then you give a no comment interview, but later you learn when you're in court that the jury have drawn what's called an adverse inference, something you perhaps never knew about before. An adverse inference is where the jury draw some negative thought about you because you answered no comment in your police interview. You might then say, well, I said no comment because that's what my solicitor told me to do. But the rules say that even if you're advised to say no comment, which might be the most suitable advice at the time, it doesn't stop this negative or adverse inference being drawn by the jury. None of these things you will know, and you may not be advised every single one of them, and it goes without saying that most lawyers can't advise you on every single thing in a very short space of time. But all of this before we talk about how long this is going to take. Because from the moment you are arrested, perhaps, let's say, for something you didn't do, and you're interviewed at the police station, perhaps 24 hours later having been to a police cell for the evening. Again, all the while, perhaps, for something you didn't do. You may be interviewed, you may be advised to give no comment because maybe you have a bit of a temper and your solicitor decided it's better that you say no comment than say something that's going to make you look really bad when it's read back to a jury later on. Let's say the police believe they have enough evidence to charge you for this offence. Again, let's say that it's for something that you didn't do, but the police, they say, have evidence that you did. You'll appear before a magistrate, and assuming that it's going to a Crown Court if it's something relatively serious, that'll be your first opportunity to indicate a plea. Not necessarily formally enter a plea, which again, something that you probably didn't know. These cases have gone to the Court of Appeal, and the first appearance at the Magistrate is the first opportunity to indicate guilty or not guilty, even if the Magistrate doesn't accept the formal plea at that stage. It will have an effect later on. But again, this is probably something that you didn't know. It may be something your lawyer didn't know, but is not necessarily negligent because they're acting on your instructions and providing you the best advice 
at that time. Let's say then you're bailed with some bail conditions. Those bail conditions might restrict you from going to a certain place at a certain time or to see certain people or even from being in your own home. For some of the worst offences, which I don't need to go into, one of the bail conditions might well be that you can no longer live at home. For how long? It could be many months. So you'll have to make alternative arrangements and go and find somewhere else to live, leaving your family behind at home. Again, let's say that this is for something that you didn't do, but this is within the rules and this is something that certainly does happen. And you may well be bailed with certain conditions such as these, which might include you not going back to your own home. So how long therefore before trial? Well, it could be many months or even a year or more. Many people are waiting out on bail, awaiting their trial. All the while again, let's say it's something that you didn't do. Eventually the day will come when you are to stand trial and you have an opportunity, a, a choice if you will, whether or not you wish to give evidence. Uh, there's no compulsion upon you to do so. But again, the jury may and probably will draw an adverse inference for your unwillingness or failure to provide any evidence in your defence. Let's say you exercise that right to not stand up and give your evidence, which in turn allows the prosecutor to cross-examine you, which might be a very unpleasant experience. Let's say you decline that opportunity and let's say the worst happens and you are convicted of this offence. Again, let's say that it's something that you didn't do then you're left with the prospects of appeal. And again, you'll have to go back to your lawyer for advice on whether or not there's a chance of you getting permission to appeal because permission is required. It's not automatic from the Crown Court. Most commonly, this will be on fresh evidence or in limited circumstances, mistakes of the judge, mistakes of the trial, or even poor representation. But either way, you'll need permission to appeal your conviction. And rightly so, you might think, because again, remember this example, it's for something that you didn't do. So you will want to try everything you can to appeal this decision, appeal this conviction, and clear your name. But even then, it's not quite so simple as that, because if you appeal your conviction, your lawyer should advise you, and you lose your appeal, not only will you most likely have to pay the costs of the appeal because you lost, but sentences at large, meaning you can either have to start the sentence again, regardless of how long you've been waiting for your appeal, which again could be many months, or the court could impose a harsher sentence because, as I say, sentences at large if you've challenged the conviction in the first place. So why am I saying all this and why does this sound like such a negative video? Well, it goes to the heart of why I made this channel in the first place, because this channel, as you always hear me say, it cannot be legal advice. You cannot and must not rely on it as legal advice, because to give you legal advice, I or anybody would have to ask you lots of questions, go through in great detail everything that has happened, every document that you have, the full chronology, research the law properly and advise you and provide you bespoke advice that specifically pertains to all of your circumstances. Not like my live streams where there's a simple question about how something generally applies and, and things like this. But this does go to the heart of why I created this channel in the first place. Because I wanted this channel to provide some level of guidance, some level of assistance, some level of reassurance that there is some free help around, and, and that's what this is. It's free help, it's free guidance, and on some level, with respect, some level of support from someone who works in this system, but not exclusively in this system. At heart, I'm an entrepreneur, I always have been. And so in true entrepreneurial spirit, I created this channel to try to leverage what I have learned and my experiences to help you, to show you that I understand how difficult these things are. So if this video is something you needed to hear by way of some reassurance from someone who works in the system that I understand, we all understand that 
this is a difficult system and if you needed to hear it and that it helps you, then I'm grateful. And I'm grateful to you for watching these videos. I'm grateful to you for subscribing to this channel and to helping me to help many more people. Because when you watch and when you subscribe and when you share my videos with other people, I do see that in the statistics. I, I see that you are sharing these videos with other people and I'm truly grateful. And I'm grateful because it helps me and the YouTube platform helps me to reach as many people as possible to share this free help for however much it helps you. So for that, I'm grateful. I thank you for watching and remember, stay humble.